and your boys in the national. Know this. Hey! <laughs> My name is Neil Lawrence. I'm an illustrator and comic artist from Glasgow. Inspiration is a weird thing. I think there's like a stereotype or like a generalization that artists only work when they're inspired. Well, it's like, if I only worked when I was inspired, I'd, I'd get nothing done. It's inspired by lots of different things. Like, a lot of it is just drawn from, like, life, I guess, and life experience. And at the same time, try to find, like, humour in it and just telling, like, little kind of funny stories. I don't like to get, like, too dark, but I like a lot of my stories to feel kind of human. It starts as, like, an idea, and sometimes it's always a good sign if it's, like, an idea that you can't really shake off. Like it's one that keeps coming back and you can't really forget about it, but the kind of process from there is then to just rough it out, either write it down in like words or maybe in like thumbnails of like really basic scrappy drawings. And then from that, it's all like different stages of like roughs and roughs to final. So from that, it's all like roughs or pencils. And then I usually do like inks where you like you tighten up the lines and stuff and then colours and then letters but really it depends on like what it is and kind of the f what kind of feel I want from it whether I'll do it in colour or black and white or digital or um, traditional. Hi I'm Tamsin and I'm a fan of Neil Florence. I think what I like most about Neil's comics is his style is just really simple and cute. It's not overdone or anything. I like to be drawn every day and it's good to draw every day and like warm up and kind of keep in practice but I'm just life doesn't happen like that and it's best if you want it to be like a full-time illustrator like there are days where you're like I, have to, I can't I have to go to a meeting and then do paperwork and then do emails and stuff like sometimes it is hard to draw every day but that's what I aim for I think like most kids drew pictures when I was wee and then kept doing it but in like my teens I kind of fell away from it I got more into like bands and music and stuff and then I got back into it like late teens early 20s and I don't know it just it felt really right also as a good like communication tool because I'm not really great with like words and stuff but if I I can like draw a picture about how I'm feeling or something I was thinking and it gets across a lot more effectively and it's just it's fun and it's just something that I can do whether I do it well or not, I don't know, but it's one of the only things I can do, really, so I kept doing it. Um, most of his topics are just kind of generally cute and heartwarming. Um, sometimes he talks about politics, but in a really open and respectful way. Yeah, my favourite comic is uh, Nine Lines of Metro, which is like a travel journal of his time in uh, Barcelona, which is my favourite city as well. I usually have it thought out beforehand whether it's suited to like traditional or digital for a lot of like my comics and like kids comics and stuff like digital works better I think because the colours are kind of brighter and stuff but I also do political stuff and I think traditionally that's more like watercolours and, and paint for that kind of cartooning so I use that to try and uh, differentiate and I just think it's just more it's better suited to it but I couldn't say which one's my favourite. It's just like different tools for different jobs really. For my personal stuff, yeah I'd say. Because when I'm doing like diary comics or like do a modern story series where it's like my own stories and my own like uh, diary stuff, I think it's important that it sounds like it's coming from me. And I've heard a lot of people saying that when they read it, they can hear my voice and um, when they're reading it, I think that's quite important. Because it's just like how I talk. I don't like get slang in just for like deliberately preserving Scott slang reads. I just, I get it in because that's that's how I talk and I, I want to kind of narrow that line between like author and reader where you feel closer together. And I think if I talk the way I talk and I'm not, that brings them closer together. Well, of course, I feel we have to help them out. Um, they don't have as much of a platform, so we definitely have to help them. And also, we all enjoy them in here, so we don't mind them being in. So far, I think maybe the Dungeon Fun book, because it's like a huge colour book and it's like a big piece of work, but also just because it's had such a good response, especially from like kids and stuff. And I always hear nice stories about, oh, my daughter, my son like loves this and they want me to read it to them before bed or it got them into reading or it got them into reading comics like that's I'm proud of that yeah I'd say you gotta work hard you gotta do it every day 
you've got to really want to do it and kind of find your own path at it. Like, I don't think you can do it just with like a qualification or anything. And I also think you should aspire to kind of sell yourself. And even if you're not proud of your work or some stuff you've done, I think you shouldn't be afraid to show it either way, even if you're not happy with it. Uh, I front it. Um, so I self-publish. So I like pay for my own books to be printed and then I'll sell them online through my Etsy shop and also like physically go into shops and then and then give them books. So I'm like my own distributor.